Hello, Salt Strong Nation. Joe Simons, like diamonds, we are back. Got my main man, Captain Dylan Hubbard. What's up, brother? I'm doing good, man. How are you? I'm doing excellent. For those of us uh, who are watching this video, you're going to see an image here, a little aerial view, a drone image, a drone pic of John's Pass. And right there is Hubbard's Marina. And this entire episode is going to be talking about this sand i mean, I think it's more than just a sand issue uh we'll dive into everything going on here uh, i know there's quite a few things that are impacting this but just to kick it off tell us what the the big problem is what has actually happened there at uh at, at john's pass well john's pass has been uh unfortunately neglected by the city county and state by for really the last two decades as this sand intrusion problem continues to build and worsen to the point now where we have a huge safety concern with kids swimming in the channel and also a drainage concern because there's two drainage pipes that are clogged with sand along that beach that's not supposed to be there. We have an accessibility concern with now accessibility to John's Pass being hindered by sand intrusion accessibility to the docks being hindered and really just all around huge impact on one of the largest tourist destinations. I believe it is the largest tourist destination in Pinellas County. And we have an opportunity to change for the better and to dramatically increase the area and the entire region's appeal and especially what's important here to us in salt strong is the fishing of yes. the region so uh i'm i'm looking forward to uh working hard on a long-term fix to not only fix the issues at my dock but also to support the 45 other john's past businesses that have signed a petition begging the city county and state for help on this sand intrusion problem that's only getting worse and then there's a lot of economic ecological impacts as well with marine mammals being forced into the main navigable channel. We've had a lot of boat interaction with uh, marine mammals like manatees and dolphins as well. So it's really uh, a multitude of issues and we have the solutions, but we need a multitude of different government agencies and uh, government entities to cooperate and work together. And that's, that's a huge challenge. Yeah. And I actually found out about this. It was like the day before you started posting about it from he's an insider member who loves you guys. And he lives somewhere back there in one of those canals or somewhere. And he had sent mm -hmm. it to me. And so this is not just impacting a couple of businesses. This is not just about Hubbard's. Uh, I mean, this this impacts a lot of people. And I know you're going to talk about a, a solution here with the jetties a little bit later. I mean, it, it could end up being one of the better fishing spots in uh in, in the west coast i mean it, it, it this could be an amazing thing if they do this and fix it the right way so i'm i'm pretty pumped to hear um hear about that yeah i mean i think we would give sebastian inlet a run for its money with summertime snook fishing if uh they do the long-term fix we're hoping for yeah well right now you guys are giving a run for the money with uh the crazy currents ripping through there uh, as this thing keeps shrinking. So I saw you guys, one, one of your boats like saved a little kid that got swept away, right? Yes. So just uh, just as of, I believe it was October 12th, the Madeira Beach fire chief sent a letter out and uh, did some research for himself. There was actually year to date from October 12th to January 1st, 2020, there was 30 water rescues. Wow. And those are water rescues that it, someone called 911 and the fire department came out and responded to. So there's 30 water rescues by the fire department and a lot more uh, orchestrated by people like us, the jet ski rental places, the parasail boats uh, as well, just in the area of that sand buildup. Last year, same time frame, so January 1 to October 12th, there was only 12 water rescues. So over 100% growth in the number of people who had life-threatening situations uh, swimming off that beach. Wow. Joe, Joe, I see little kids ages one to six years old stepping off that beach and swimming around because it's they think it's just one of those beaches that they can go hang out at. It's not a beach. 
It's sand buildup in one of the busiest and strongest tidal current passes in the region. Yeah. And I mean, the, the pass is now one third blocked with sand. So when you take a huge volume of water and constrict it down by a third, it moves even greater uh, volume and at a greater rate of speed. So literally, I'm a big, tall guy. And if I walk out there to waste deep water, it's hard for me to stand when that wow. tide's ripping out. And there's kids, there's little kids out there. And it's an attractive nuisance. We have kids thinking it's okay to jump off the bridge now because there's a big beach for them to climb out of the water on. And then kids, younger kid or uh, older kids, like ages 14 to 18 will hang out there and skimboard and listen to music with their buddies and literally have watched groups of children swim across the pass and they challenge each other who can make it across touch touch the dock on the other side and swim back and there's boats zipping by them Jeez. people on rental boats and we all know how that goes i mean <laughs> shout out to freedom boat club but <laughs> some people that get behind the wheel over there you never know and there's kids swimming out there it's it's just a, such a dramatic safety concern and that's what a lot of people are worried about and the Madeira Beach fire chief is quoted in his most recent letter saying it's not if it's when we're on borrowed time before something more serious happens. Crazy. Yeah. I mean, it, it has to be even tough for all the, I know you guys rent kayaks and stuff and paddle boards to even get out there. If there's any amount of current, um, yes, our paddle board and kayak rental location, uh, behind our office there where you see the kayaks and paddle boards on the beach, yeah. we actually do not really rent them from that location any longer because of tidal concerns. We have a beach cabana location on Treasure Island just down the street. So 90% of our rentals now occur out on Treasure Island, where before it was like 50-50, if not 60-40, where most of our rentals occurred right there on the beach. So we've already seen a dramatic downturn in rental business, and we're already turning a lot of business away from John's Pass. And that's the big concern now is we're looking at places to leave John's Pass and move to new locations. And if we move our boats out there, you can see clearly in this image when our boats pull in and pull out, it pushes that sand back and holds that sand back. If those big boats leave, that sand is going to rip down the boardwalk and close multiple locations. So we are looking at a possible in incredible economic downturn in John's Pass Village, which again is the largest tourist destination. I've got a lot of residents in Madeira Beach, Treasure Island, St. Pete that are worried about property taxes being increased and property uh, values decreasing due to John's Pass Village losing tourism based on this issue. So it's definitely a really, really big deal. So talk about how this happened, because I've heard a couple of different uh, interpretations of it you're you're probably more in tune than anyone i know and and uh and i mean you're literally dealing with the mayor and you guys are getting into into this any way you can w what what caused all this like how did all this happen and how long has it been going on for well first off i want to dispel a lot of the comments that i hear some of our more <laughs> yeah. some of our more um i guess you could say salty uh anglers and fishermen and people that are fish a lot and are out on the boat a lot love to say, well, it's a pass, pass has changed, it's just returning to its natural form. And that's completely untrue. This pass was formed in 1848, 170 years ago, this pass was formed by a hurricane. So this pass has been open for nearly 200 years. And this sand didn't start incoming until again, around the mid to late 90s. So it's been a long run without these big sand issues. In 86, uh, 87, they completed the construction of the Johns Pass boardwalk. And that boardwalk had deep water. We kept our large party boat in that image there behind the stern of our boat. You can see those pilings on what is now dry land. That's where we kept a 110 foot party boat back in the 70s and 80s and into the 90s. It wasn't until 2004 when we had to deconstruct that dock because of the sand issues. And I'm only 29 years old. When I was eight years old, where those pilings are on that dry land was about 30 feet deep. And I almost drowned because I fell off the front of the boat there, tying wow. up a boat. So this is and, from our oh mutual friend, Jovan there, McNeil. So this is 2016, mm -hmm. which is not that long ago. Um, wow. 
yeah, it's a very, very incredible uh, issue that only continues to compound. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that people say is, oh, you need to dredge, you need to dredge, just, just dredge it out and it, the problem won't be there anymore. Well, again, in 2000, late 2017, early 2018, almost $200,000 was spent on a huge dredge project that made that whole area deep once again. So where, was, uh, where my mouse is, where, where did, where were they right that here? Whole, that whole area. Yes. Okay. In 2000, late 2017, early 2018, almost $200 or $200,000 was spent. And it took about 10 months from it to go to, from deep water where they had dredged to fill completely back in to even larger than what's shown there in the photo. Uh, so the sand is just continuing to build up. And it's a really, uh, it comes down to being a multifaceted issue. There's a couple different things at play. There's two drainage pipes that come out where that sand is built up. One is the DOT drain responsible for flushing all of the south end of Madeira Beach's Gulf Boulevard. And then right there, kind of where your mouse is, if you go up to the boardwalk, yeah. is the city drain right in there. And the city drain is completely blocked with sand. And that's responsible for draining all the water that builds up inside so, John's Pass Village. So those are those pictures here. So now this is this is just downtown area on the boardwalk. And this is all getting... That is the main strip of John's Pass uh, Village. And that is after maybe uh, 45 minutes of just moderate rain. Wow. And this is what occurs every time it rains when those drainage pipes are clogged up and then that storm sewer water sits there all day as you can see this is sunrise this was october 11th on a busy sunday inside john's pass that water sat there all day mm. until monday morning finally the city came out and cleared the drain and allowed that water to escape so mm. that that drainage pipe pushes that sand out more and really builds to the beach then uh, FDOT really made the problem a lot worse. Like I said, it started around the mid to late 90s and it was just a moderate issue we were able to work around. We were able to kind of hold it back. Uh, in the early 2000s, it got a little worse and it was became a bigger, uh, it, it started impeding the drainage and impeding access. It became a bigger issue, but it wasn't a huge problem where I'm spending half my day talking about sand issues until <laughs> after the construction of that new bridge, when FDOT came in and constructed that new Johns Pass bridge that we have today, uh, that construction started in 2006, it ended in 2010. When they came in and built it, they built these huge, what they call rip wrap platforms. And those rip wrap platforms is where they dumped a bunch of rubble and rock and they covered it with sand to make these big platforms for them to bring out construction material to their barges stationed at the middle of the channel to construct the bridge. And that was all well and good. It was a difficulty, but we worked around it. Obviously, there's going to be difficulties when you're doing major construction like that. But when the construction completed in 2010, FDOT came in and they cleared out all the riprap and material that they had built up on the north uh, west corner of John's Pass Bridge, but they didn't clean up their mess on the northeast corner of John's Pass Bridge in front of the boardwalk there behind our business. That was left a huge amount of material and riprap and sand by FDOT after the construction of the bridge. And that area has exponentially exacerbated this issue to the point where any sand that makes it around the corner is able to hit that, slow down, and then all of a sudden accumulate. So it's really, really made the issue a hundred times worse. And now it's unmanageable. We can't push it all out because it's all held together with all those rocks. You can see in the upper left-hand corner of this image, some of that riprap material that FDOT brought in and did not clean up. And there's a ton more of it buried in sand uh, below your mouse there along the side of the bridge. So that is a huge issue. So the city drainage needs to be uh, uh, fixed and solved with culverts. The DOT drain there needs to be fixed. All the DOT uh, rip wrap that they brought in and material needs to be cleaned out and then a huge part of this is the jetty system the jetty system needs to be lengthened 
And then the beach groins along Madeira Beach need to be lengthened and strengthened. Now the beach groins are already been addressed in January of 2020, Madeira Beach got clearance to move forward and it was gonna get funded by Florida legislation this year to lengthen those beach groins. But unfortunately due to COVID, all that legislation was defunded and vetoed by our, our governor because they wanted to hold the money in the coffers of the state uh, to deal with the COVID crisis, which is obviously a good decision. I'm not complaining about that, but the city needs to bring it back up in 2021 to get those beach groins uh, refunded. And then the well, what county- is, Real quick, what is a beach groin for those wondering uh, why Dylan's talking about groins on the podcast? <laughs> <laughs> so a beach groin, what that is, is it's essentially a, uh, a jetty system in the middle of a beach. So in the middle of a beach, you'll have a, a rock jetty system that goes out perpendicular from the beach. And that's what they call a beach groin. And that's meant to catch sand as it moves down the beach. Because nowadays we spend millions of dollars on beach renourishment. But if each beach had beach groins, you wouldn't need to spend that money on renourishment because those groins catch that sand naturally and build up and lengthen the beaches. And Madeira Beach hasn't had beach renourishment in decades because of their beach groins. Those groins catch that sand, build up the beach, and the beach gets naturally bigger. And because of renourishment to the north of uh, Madeira Beach, the beach has grown even more because the groins are catching all that renourishment sand. But now the groins have been overtaken with sand and the beach has gotten really big and that's great. But now they need to lengthen and strengthen those groins to catch any more future sand. That hasn't been done in decades and the, the groins are totally overtaken. So now sand can travel freely from north to south naturally and go past the beach groins that's supposed to catch it and go past the jetty that's also supposed to catch it and end up on this sand deposit that we're looking at in this image. So it's really, that's the, the bulk of the issues. We've got drainage that needs to be addressed. FDOT needs to clean their mess. The city of Madeira Beach needs to get their groins redone. And then the county needs to work with Army Corps on the most exciting thing we're gonna talk about in this podcast, which is the 2018 Inlet Management Plan. They have laid out in alternative six of that 2018 inlet management plan, an option to lengthen the Johns Pass jetty system by 230 feet aside. So they take 150 foot jetties that we have now and make them 230 feet longer. That's a 380 foot long jetty, three and a half times longer than we have now. Wow. And it would be incredible. That jetty would extend well into uh, the, the, the Gulf there. And I just, I couldn't even fathom the amount of snook, mackerel, sheep's head, mangrove snapper, trout, redfish, even kingfish that would be attracted to that jetty system. It would be the largest man-made artificial structure in the region. And we would have an incredible amount of fish. And you can see- And then you're talking about going out here? Yes, sir. Yeah. So you can see in that image how the beach sand goes all the way to the tip of that jetty. So if any- sort of wave action disturbs that water, sand is easily able to rip. And you can actually see it with your mouse. You can see that sand coming around the jetty and going into the channel. Mm -hmm. See it, how it kind of curves? See how that sand kind of comes off and you see the sand in the water there? Yep. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely incredible. Uh, let, me, let me see if I can pull up this document. Wow. Yeah, let me, uh, do you want me to make you a co-host you can share? Yeah, if you don't mind, because yeah, this, yeah. this is a, a very dramatic image I'll pull up. So that's wild. So how many how many feet did you say was the proposal for a jetty? 230 feet longer, both wow. jetties, north and south. And what happens, one thing that I forgot to mention is not only does that solve our sand incursion problem, but we have a big problem with the Johns Pass Village channel. That channel comes out, you have to almost take a left a little bit as you come out of the pass and head to the south. And then you got to take almost a 90 degree right hand turn to head north hmm. to get out of the channel and avoid that sandbar. If we build those longer jetty systems in the 2018 inlet management plan, it outlines what they call an ebb jet. And what would occur is that 
outgoing tide would be funneled through those longer jetties and it would extend further into the Gulf at a greater volume and rate of speed. So it would actually deepen our channel and straighten the channel out. So not only would our sand incursion problem stop, but we'd have a deeper, straighter Johns Pass Village channel as well, which would only funnel more fish uh, through those jetties. Uh, it would be uh, a very exciting thing to say the least. So. I'm hoping we can work towards getting those jetties lengthened because as I said before, that would challenge uh, Sebastian Inlet for sure. Yeah. It would be incredible. Where, have you guys been talking about cost? Like where does that fit in with just, you know, you mentioned $200,000 worth of dredging, which is not, I mean, that's a lot of money, but you know, compared to what these cities and Muni spend, that's, that's not like a massive project where you're talking about $10 million. How much does it cost to do that jetty proposal? Any idea? Uh, unfortunately, the inlet management plan doesn't put any sort of economic uh, assessment or any economic value to their document. If they did at all, they would have al selected alternative six already and we'd, we wouldn't be talking today because we yeah. have longer jetties. <laughs> because in the inlet management plan, the reason they didn't select alternative six is because it says that the perceived cost wouldn't outweigh the benefit. And when they say that, they're only talking about sediment. The whole inlet management plan, the only thing it's looking at is sediment mm -hmm. and what sediment does, where it goes. And if they spend this amount of money, can they make sediment move this many ways? So if they took into account at all the economic value of lengthening those jetties, I know a lot of people that wouldn't be fishing the Skyway Fishing Pier anymore. They'd be yeah. coming to John's Pass. Yep. John's Pass is already an amazing fishing spot. But if we had jetties that were three and a half times longer, it would be incredible in the summertime. So people would travel from all over to go fish John's Pass. And that would the economic value to the city, county, region, and state would just quadruple. It would pay for itself economically. And the opportunity costs and an economic downturn that would be created if they don't address this problem and they allow John's Pass businesses to fail and the number one tourist destination to essentially lose 30 to 40% of its businesses along the waterfront, uh, we would see a huge economic downturn. So to avoid a downturn, to get the economic benefit, let's lengthen some jetties here. And as far as the cost of it, it would be a very substantial cost. Uh, and I would imagine it would be in the at least five to seven million dollar range um but maybe less i don't know i'm not an expert but it's a drop in the bucket for fdep so the the department of environmental protection the army corps they get billions of dollars in rev in yeah. funding every year i mean the most dredge projects and those renourishment projects, they're spending 10, 15, 20 million dollars on beach yeah. renourishment. And this is purely caused by their beach renourishment. So they need to fix their issue. <laughs> FDOT and their construction of their bridge caused this issue to get worse. The jetty system not being addressed the beach renourishment's exacerbating our problem. So I think we totally have a leg to stand on as far as pushing and urging to get this uh, moving. And we have made some headway. Um, I'm very blessed and uh, happy that to report that a lot of people are listening. We've, we've gained a lot of uh, momentum through our social media uh, posts, videos, photos, uh, friends like you having me on podcasts to talk, uh, we've done seven news interviews in the last week nice. uh, about this issue. So we're definitely getting the word out there. Um, we launched a new website last night called savejohnspass.com. So savejohnspass.com. And uh, that website uh, had over 7,000 visitors in 12 hours since we launched it. And over 600 people have supplied their email to get on that email list to help us fight and stay informed. Cool. Uh, we have a rally coming up November 6 at 4 p.m. So we're, we're, we're getting some momentum. I've talked to Senator, Senator Rubio's office. I've talked to Congressman Chris's office. I've talked to the county administrator, some county commissioners. I'm very, very well supported and connected to the mayor of Madeira Beach and vice mayor of Madeira Beach. So I, I feel like we're starting to get some headway, but the pressure has to stay on. And uh, I'm not giving up on this because I know that John's Pass Village and our entire region will 
be incredibly benefited by longer jetty systems and correcting our Johns Pass Village channel issues and our sand encroachment problem in Johns Pass. Everybody's going to win. Businesses, homeowners, residents, visitors, anglers, the whole the whole region. It's a it's really kind of sad that uh, it hasn't been done already. But hey, we're gonna, we're going to keep fighting. Yeah, I mean, how awesome for us west coast guys to have a, a jetty you know similar it could be similar to a sebastian that uh i mean could be like you said i mean one of the, the the better fishing jetties in the in the state i just signed up by the way i went to savejohnspass.com and put in my email so cool i joined i, I joined the, the fight um, <laughs> cool so you did you have a picture to share i just i, yes. I went off sharing so you could uh, uh hopefully pull here. some up and show us my first attempt to share screens on zoom can you see yes oh wow 1984 did you so go 1984 back on google maps and no this this the- is uh we uh had a meeting with the county administrator and the county public works and the county has this crazy program called like argus or something mm-hmm. and they have they i think they redacted this a lot uh because I, they didn't want to give me everything, <laughs> but they gave me the highlights. And this is incredibly powerful as we go through this. So this is 1984. You can see clearly here in the circled area, the uh, boardwalk is here and this is Hubbard's Marina. This is our main dock, boats out. And this was our secondary dock where we store the boats and we move the boats over to this little dock to load up passengers. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and then a room for a seventh boat here and then our loading zone. So we have seven boats on our main dock and our main loading dock. And Boardwalk is built. Uh, John's Pass Village is a booming fishing destination. You notice jetty system and deep, deep water. Yep. So we moved to 1987 or 1997. Wow, starting to see some sand and you can freaking see it clearly look at that joe you can see the sand coming around the jetty this is an incoming tide and this is what happens every time that tides every time that tide starts screaming that incoming tide pushes that sand and this is the old john's pass bridge arrangement you can see the fender systems different you can see the openings a little bit down and as that sand came in it hit the middle of the bridge and a lot of times went through the channel into the islands so in the mid to late 90s when our sand encroachment problem started it wasn't that bad it was manageable it was annoying it definitely affected business but it wasn't that bad uh, because a lot of it was going into the back so that's 1997 sand starting to build up this is when we sent our first letters to the city county and state making them aware and and asking for uh addressing the jetties so now man um yeah yeah it's crazy this. yeah this is 2002 you can still clearly see the volume of sand being pushed in and now you can see all the sands clouding up the channel and really starting to deposit and you can see here by our boats that we've we've been able to manage it it hasn't really overtaken it's not really built up and you can see the number of boats on our main dock is much lower now because we have sand building up so now we move 2002 you can really see the stand, sand start to build up along yeah. that jetty or along that jetty and by the bridge as uh, time goes on. 2004, it's getting really bad, really built up along the whole length of the jetty. 2006, this is when the problems really start. You can see the construction is beginning now yeah. and you can see we've been able to manage the sand. It's been bad, but it hasn't been that bad. And you can still see the dock. So this is 2006, Doc is still there. That's 14 years ago, not very long ago. Doc is still there. So 2007, all right, they're building their little riprap platforms. Beach is coming back already. Doc is pretty much useless. 2010, we had to totally remove the Doc. It's totally gone because it's overtaken with sand. You can see where DOT has built their platforms on the east side of the bridge now. And you can see the city drainage constantly has to be maintained because it's constantly getting blocked with sand. So 2010, bridge construction is completed. They cleaned up their mess on the west side of the bridge. But look at what they left in front of our business. And at this point, my dad was filming, taking photos. He tried to file a lawsuit. He was calling the county, the city, the state, anybody who would listen, screaming about the sand. 
because you can see now that we're barely able to get one boat in on this side where historically we kept three boats here. It's really, really bad. Man. And now 2015. <laughs> so in five years, we went from where the DOT left us with a huge mess and a big problem to now we have an incredible problem on our hands. Yeah. Five years time. And then 16, we've worked really hard. You can see the edge of where we've been pushing that sand back. Just with like this. with your props, like you're doing. How um, I don't recall. <laughs> <laughs> I don't recall. I don't recall how we push that sand back. Uh, but you can see the sand is still built up over here. Just an old little pressure washer. A little. <laughs> yeah, I was. It, that was all shovels, actually. Uh, so you can see we pushed it back, and uh, we're still in a big pickle. 2017. This was right after the dredge had occurred. It was uh, somewhere in here. I think it was 2000. It was somewhere in here that the dredge had occurred and you can see deep water, but the sand huh. already came back so quickly and you can still see all the FDOT mess. And then 2018, right after $200,000 was spent dredging. Oh, go right back to that back, one, go back to the one above real quick. So that was the dredge operation. I think this was probably shortly after we had dredged because it was okay. all deep. It was six feet deep along the seawall after the dredge was completed. Uh, so I think this is mislabeled, um, but you can see here, this was 2015, how big this beach was. And then you can see after $200,000 was spent dredging, how big the beach was. <laughs> it yeah. basically literally did nothing. And then 2019, you can see it getting bigger. So right here, it's pretty much at the face of the dock in 2019. You can see it's now extending past the dock and then 2020, it just continues to build here. Now, this year, we had a couple bad storms, and a lot of this sand that was built up over here travels east. So when the sand travels east, we have to work really hard to keep it from overtaking our dock, and it typically just builds up bigger into the pass. And that's what's happened now is all this sand is cleared out from under the bridge and is just built out here mm. and just filled out this area. And what happens is when this beach gets really big here, it then backfills. So over time in the next two to four months, I will expect a bunch of dry land to build up underneath John's Pass Bridge. And that's what's going to happen is we're going to have that sand just really start to overtake this whole entire area, um, like something like this. And right now it's already currently, it's sticking out like this. In so, can you currently can you see it um only at low tide when it's way out there is it is it like yeah at high tide only the very biggest volume of sand is really showing so at high tide it kind of looks like this but this whole area even at high tide is only maybe knee deep for me okay so you like, still can't pull a boat in or anything like that absolutely not no we we haven't been able to use this slip let me undo all that stuff uh-oh see first time trying to screen share it's not going well uh we haven't used this slip here uh that we pay for uh we still rent it today we haven't been able to use this slip in four years and this Jeez. is a slip that we pay for and we hopefully want to clear the sand out and then have another slip here and then the ultimate goal is to build a fishing pier along the seawall here with transient dockage so people can come in and dock their boat and hang out in john's pass there's no transient dockage in john's pass at all and there's nowhere that fishes that allows you to fish uh right now they took fishing away you used to be able to fish on the boardwalk and now you're not able to fish on the boardwalk anymore and um where are those guys fishing at john's pass and underneath the bridge most of the guys that fish john's pass will fish underneath the bridge or along the jetty okay. uh and that's where most of the fishing occurs and we allow fishing on our main dock um as long as we're not actively loading and unloading and as long as we're open but we want to build that fishing pier and then allow people to fish from it even through the night so that's a long-term goal of mine if we can get this long-term fix situated and we can get a dredge going and we're more than happy to work with our property owner and even start investing in trying to remove that sand but i'm not willing to invest in removing that sand just to have it come back 10 months later so yeah. 
a lot of people say, oh, it's natural, just let it happen. It's not natural. It hasn't happened in 170 years. So why is it happening now? And then the, a lot of people say, well, you should just spend your money and dredge it. It's like, and oh, Ben Mala, he's got all the money. He bought John's Pass, he should dredge it. Well, that's nice. Even a multi-millionaire isn't gonna throw money away. That's just not a wise decision. And dredging John's Pass and dredging that area where the sand is built up would literally, you might as well just pile up your money and burn it because yeah. it Because it just happened just so not fast. that long ago. So yeah, already, yeah. already tried that. Yep. Wow. Well, this is, this is super helpful. Uh, I, I, those pictures uh, at the end, man, that um, you would think that if you get that in the right hands, which I know you are, that it's, it's opening their eyes at least to say, all right, we have a, an issue here. It's pretty obvious what's going on. And what's frustrating is the county provided this to me. So county public works provided me those images yeah. and the county is the one who has been saying, it's not our jurisdiction, it's not our jurisdiction, sorry, we can't help you. And most mm. of the county commissioners won't even answer my phone calls or my emails. And I've even been knocking on their office doors in uh, downtown Clearwater where the county courthouse is. Even with COVID, it's not slowing me down, I'm gonna be knocking on their doors and uh, if I have to, banging down some doors because we gotta, we gotta fix this problem. And yeah. Because it's such a multifaceted problem, it really gives a lot of political out to people. Because if I approach the county and say, hey, I need help with this, the county can say that's not our jurisdiction because the sand where it's built up is most of it is on private property. So they're right. And they're totally able to sleep at night and say, it's not our jurisdiction. We mm -hmm. can't help you. But it is their jurisdiction as the non-federal sponsor of the inlet management plan to encourage the Army Corps and the people behind the inlet management plan to choose alternative six and lengthen those jetties. That is their jurisdiction. The city, same thing. They're sending out, we're asking people to email this email list and the city commissioner, Helen Palladino and the city manager, uh, Robert Daniels are sending out this email saying, you may have been misinformed. We are actively working and uh, the, uh, the jetty or this issue is out of our jurisdiction. We need the county's help. They're basically throwing the county under the bus. Mm. Their definition of actively working is leaving their drainage clogged for over a week now and sending some letters to Army Corps and essentially doing nothing to help the situation right now. The mayor has been very helpful in answering the phone, but his team is not working. His public works department, uh, Jamie Ahern's the public's work director of Madeira Beach, came down to John's Pass, looked me in the eye and said he will not help. He cannot bring equipment out to clear the drain. And the previous public works director, Dave Marsicano, he was out there every week with a big backhoe clearing that drain. Every time it got clogged up, he sent his guys down there with the proper equipment to clear the drain. The new city, uh, man, or the new city public works director is totally failing and is absolutely not actively working to solve this problem. So we need Madeira Beach to step up as a whole. It's and, probably uh, never caught a fish before either, so... Just no, saying. definitely not. Definitely not. You can tell when you when you talk to them. But uh, it's uh, definitely frustrating in that respect. But we're, we're starting to make some headway. Like I said, this, the city mayor, the vice mayor has been super helpful. So we're working through that. Uh, but them telling people they're misinformed and it's not their jurisdiction is is true to a, a, an extent in the fact that it's not their jurisdiction to clean up FDOT's mess or lengthen the jetties, but it is their jurisdiction to clear the drain that they've left plugged now for over a week and a half. It's, uh, it is their jurisdiction to fix their beach groins, uh, which they already were working on, but got shot down to COVID. So they need to work to get that reinstated. And it is their jurisdiction to support their number one tourist destination in their city, like 60% of the revenue for the yeah. city of Madeira Beach comes from John's Pass Village parking meters. So if John's Pass Village is suffering, they need to get off their butts and get to work. And right now they're just sending emails telling people they're misinformed and they're actively working on the problem, which in my uh, experience is completely false when it comes to city public works and the city manager. Man, love it. This has been super helpful. Everyone, savejohnspass.com, right? Yes. I, I, did a, I did it while we were talking. It was uh, super easy. You put your email in and let them know that you support it. 
And uh, and what else does that do when I put my email with the and the whole hashtag? How else can we help? So the the biggest things you can do to help is by going to savejohnspass.com and entering your email because I'm going to be sending out some email updates. I'm going to send you an email list of people that you can contact. I'll send you uh, some uh, helpful ways to start your email. So all you have to do is copy and paste it. And if you want, you can change it up or write your own and then copy and paste the emails I provide. So that way you're reaching out to the proper authorities. And on that page is some of our information on the upcoming rallies. So we have a rally November 6th at 4 p.m. at Madeira Beach City Hall. They're having a closed city, county, and state meeting where uh, only a limited number of attendees. I'm the only business owner allowed to go, even there's even though there's 45 businesses fighting for this. Um, so I'm representing John's Pass Village and obviously our, my own business as well. And uh, they won't let public in there. So what we're trying to do is get a bunch of public sitting, standing out there in the parking lot with signage and, and shirts. And we're not rioting, we're not yelling and screaming, but as those city officials, public county officials, as those state representatives and congressional representatives and senators walk out of that meeting, they're gonna be met with a sea of people to show them, hey, it's not just Hubbard's Marina. It's not just the 45 businesses in Johns Pass. Yeah. This is an entire community that really is needing change and longer jetties for better fishing. Uh, yeah, so buddy. so it, that's one thing we're doing. And then this coming Sunday, uh, a local county commissioner uh, or someone who's running for county commissioner, Tammy Vasquez, is holding a rally this Sunday at 3.30 p.m. Um, to try to raise awareness on the subject and then also raise awareness for her running for uh, uh, a county commissioner seat. And she is running against Charlie Justice, who has not yet once answered a phone call, an email, or anything from me. So I'm very happy to support Tammy in her run for county commission. And hopefully she gets elected um, because she's got to be better than no action. <laughs> <laughs> cool. And so I'm looking on the site November 6th. Yes, is, no. uh, is the one you're talking about where that you want you want people to show up. Yeah, November 6 at 4 p.m. at Deer Beach City Hall. Uh, everybody show up, bring a sign, bring a t-shirt, whatever, show your support for fixing this issue. And then if you want to, this coming Sunday, 3.30 p.m., we're going to be meeting on the beach and around the beach right there behind Hubbard's Marina inside John's Pass. Cool. Maybe we should come up with like a cool gift for the best or biggest sign uh, that someone can create. So. I like that idea. See, I love talking to you. You're always so inventive. <laughs> well, it's inventive. I, I like big signs, you know? <laughs> I like big signs that I cannot lie. <laughs> that's exactly what popped into my head. I knew it was. I knew it was, And that's why I saw you laughing. All right, brother, this has been good. Uh, thank you for, for your time on this. I know you've probably regurgitated this a few times, but uh, we, you know we've got tens of thousands of listeners uh, every month on this uh, podcast. And so I know this will reach a lot of people. I know there's a massive amount of our people that are in Florida and even people outside of, of Florida and even the West Coast that have either visited John's Pass, know about it, have some good memories with either yourself or your dad, your grandpops. Uh, I mean, you guys have been there in a staple of John's Pass. But as your, as your point pointed out, it's not just about you guys at all. We're talking about a massive tourist uh, destination uh, that provides a lot of income and jobs for a ton of people uh, yeah. around that entire area. It, it would be a massive, massive, massive impact. So, Yeah, and, and one thing that you brought up is a lot of people from out of town, out of state, you can still be a huge part of this because you're out of town visitor. Maybe you're not a resident who doesn't live in the uh, representation of these uh, elected officials that you're, we're asking you to email, but you're an out of town resident who visited, who visits and tourism is huge to our area. So yeah. don't think you can't send an email out to the county commissioners and the state representatives because you don't live here. Check out savejohnspass.com. Help us share the word, spread the word. You, if you can't attend the rally, share it on your Facebook page. Let's spread awareness. Let's get people signed up on that email list and we'll keep you up to date. We'll keep changing that website up keeping it up to speed as best we can. And uh, all we can do is fight to save John's pass. Yes, sir. 
we appreciate you, brother. You're always uh, always willing to fight for what's right. So we really appreciate that. Everyone go check out savejohnspass.com. And if you're listening in your car or working out, like I know some of you do, we'll have all this at saltstrom.com in the podcast section, all the show notes and the links. So guys, we appreciate you, Captain Hubbard. We appreciate you, brother. And uh, man, uh, hopefully I'm, I'm putting it on my calendar November 6th. That'd be cool to go out there. I'm going to work on a big sign, so all right it's all well, I'll, I'll have a i'll have a present ready for you but don't forget if you're too busy to go fishing you're just too busy <laughs> nailed it <laughs> thanks guys we out <laughs>